It's only about minus one, but everything's frozen up. The little stream down below, it's just thick ice. If you listen carefully, you can still hear the water trickling a little bit. been pretty easy going so far. All the snow's still soft. It's none of that slushy, icy stuff. Although we have had a bit of ice to contend with. I brought me micro spikes just in case, but not had to get them out yet. Proper little winter wonderland today. Gorgeous day. Baltic mind, but <laughs> gorgeous all the same. Some cracking colour in the sky. Little kinder Christmas tree, look. Finally, we're almost there. is bleak low stones camped here before looks like we've got it all to ourselves The views are stunning. Wow. Look at it. So the problem you've got with all this snow is you don't always know what's underneath <laughs> for pitching your tent. Looks like a nice little flat spot over there. I reckon I'm gonna just go behind these rocks. So I've gone with a bigger pack today, the Sierra Designs Flex Capacitor. With it being really cold weather, I wanna make sure I get plenty of extra gear in here. And this is a uh, 60 to 75 liters. Loads of room. Clear a little bit of snow from underneath where the tent's gonna go. giving the Terra Nova Voyager a run out today. But before I get pitched up, a quick thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring the video today. So we've been using Squarespace for our website for a few years now, and it's been really easy for someone like me who's got no experience at building websites to be able to do everything all by myself, apart from all the shop stuff, which our Joe does now. So all we originally did was chose one of the ready-made templates and um, we uploaded our own photos, added some text and then dragged things around and within a couple of hours we built a website. There's loads of things that you can use it for, uploading video tutorials, um, subscription services, newsletters. This week I've uploaded a load of camping gear to the shop. Managed to sell loads of gear and Squarespace have handled all the payments for me. All I've had to do is ship it out. So it doesn't matter what you do, whether you write blogs, take photographs, sell little crafts that you make in your kitchen. Um, Squarespace has got something for you and if you want to have a go at building a website of your own then click the link in the description below or head over to squarespace.com forward slash Paul Messner you'll get a totally free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So 
that's a bonus. The ground isn't that hard. You can actually get the pegs in. So the pole sleeves are colour coded. Blue and blue. And a red one across the front. Loads of space in there. There's orange in the sky behind me and the sun's over there. Camera just doesn't do it justice. The tent's starting to frost up already. And as soon as that sun drops, temperature's just gonna go boom. Even my bag's frosting up. Get some of this gear away. There's loads of room in here. First job, it's gotta be get this sleeping pad up. Get me off this cold floor. Got my little pump. I don't think I'll have the puff in me today to blow it up. Got a little bit of comfort today, I bought the Trekker chair. If I can remember how to put it on. I need to get off the floor fast. Knees are freezing. That's better. Comfy chair. Through the back, pretty decent view as well. I'll take that all day. And my drinking water starting to freeze. Gonna swap these clothes for something a little bit warmer, and then I'm gonna hit the cattle on, I think. If I want so cold, I'll be out in that. Really cold, Andy's just been over and said it's minus four. Um, there's no breeze at the minute, but when that chill comes, it's gonna be down a bit lower than that as well, I think. Get cattle on.
Ganji is. <clears throat> They're pretty hard to light when it's cold. It's trying. Having some sort of torch lighter is so much better than just a, a normal big lighter. The flame's much hotter and any sort of breeze won't blow this out. We're getting there, look. Steadily. Look at that. We've got ice on the inside of the tent already. <coughs> so I've been badly all week. So I probably shouldn't have come tonight, but... Uh, last chance saloon before Christmas, really, so... Um, needs must. And I'm going to warm myself up in a minute with a cappuccino. Some new ones. Costa cappuccinos in sachets. Not seen these ones before. Keep searching for the perfect sachet coffee. Supposed to be creamy. It's more like lumpy. I'll get in there. It's the Michelin man, look. <laughs> What's the temperature now, mate? I've just checked it off on my phone, it was something like minus 4.3. Okay, now. No wonder I can't feel my toes. <laughs> this is going to do a job though. I can't wait for my tea tonight. I've got beef stew, dumplings, and some potatoes. What you got, Andy? I've got chicken fajita with rice. <laughs> That's pretty standard, that one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one of my favourites. Yeah. It warms you up. That's what you need. And it's quick, it's easy, yeah, and it's, it's tasty. It's easy and it warms you up, that's what you need. That is actually creamy. They're not lying. A bit more expensive than the other ones though, but... Yeah, that's winning so far. Torturing myself. Wow. Not quite torture. Loads of stars tonight. The sun only went down an hour ago. It doesn't take long to frost over. And he's all tucked up and all, look. He's got more frost than me. Well, I'm in there, mate. Yeah, lovely and toasty. Kettle on. I'm going to be doing in a minute. Just uh, plugging my phone in to get some charge in it and then uh, stick kettle on and get me some pasta pot thing. That's Andy's fancy new gadget. Comes with an app. So you can monitor the temperature all night. Minus 4.1. Can you link two of them up, mate, on the same app? Yeah. So you can, you can like, have one, one inside and one outside your yeah, tent? Yeah, you can have... Uh, I'm not sure how many you can have uh, a maximum, but you can definitely have, like, two or three. Yeah, So you not... could have, like, one outside, one in tent, so oh. you know, see what difference in temperature. Well, I've had door open when I was sat in the tent, and the difference in temperature being inside yeah, is yeah. massive. I bet it's 10 degrees warmer inside there. Yeah. Well, I don't know. All in me and is absolutely wise to have it. Yeah. Like I say, all the morning when, when I was at lakes, all, all the condensation in here. When I got up, I went like that and it was just thick. All the condensation had all just frosted up. It was just like a layer, <laughs> a layer of snow inside. <laughs> you got the lights on. All you can see is like a fog in your face. <laughs> Put the kettle on again. Just to keep things warm. Although when I'm trying to get my head down later, I regret having all that caffeine. That's cold. 
Chuffed to bits with this setup at the minute though. Comfy chair that I can sit up in. I'm a bit far back at the minute, that's why my head's touching the top, but if I got rid of the bobble, I wouldn't be touching out. Acres of space in here. I think when you're spending long hours inside a tent, um, you know, the small compact ones like the Hilleberg Solo and the uh, Southern Cross one even, it's a small space to be in for 14 or 16 hours. Stretched out here, really comfortable. I think it's time to get the boots off, fresh socks. My little gown slippers. Got these ages ago at the when I did the rab tour, I've never worn them yet. Vertex Quantum, so they'll be water resistant. Bit of a solid base. Ah, there's a little loop on the back. If you use the loop, it goes on easier. Very dapper. I'm like a ninja turtle now, though. It's not about image. No one checking my feet out up here. Cowabunga. So when it came to choosing all my gear for today's trip, I wasn't quite as spoilt for choice as I normally am. Um, as you saw from my last video, and if you've been on the website, I've I've uploaded loads of, of my gear for sale. So the shelves are not quite bare, but they're getting there. So thanks to everybody that's, that's bought the gear. Um, you got some really good gear and at a decent price as well. So I had quite a few comments from people that said they'd like to have the chance to win some of that gear. So I've set up a couple of prize competitions, which I'll link in the description below. Um, first one is for a really good quality tent, an MSR Freelight 2. Uh, weighs about 900 grams, loads of space inside. One of the top spec MSR tents anyway. And the other prize up for grabs is a, an MSR cook set. So there's the MSR wind burner stove, top quality stove. It's definitely the best stove that I've ever used in windy conditions. It's really efficient on gas and it boils your water in no time at all. But if you want to do a little bit more um, adventurous cooking, I've also chucked in there the MSR wind burner skillet. Uh, so if you want to be cooking steaks and frying potatoes and all that malarkey, then um, that's included in with that prize as well. So these prizes are quite expensive if you were to buy them. So it's, it gives you an opportunity to, to maybe win one of them for just a couple of quid. Also, it helps me to continue to fund the YouTube channel, buy some new gear. I have got a, a new winter tent in mind. And also there is a percentage of the proceeds going to the charity Children with Cancer. So there's also the chance to enter the competition for free by post. So please check the link in the description if that's something you're interested in. Big thanks to everyone that's already supported and I wish you the best of luck. So I've been racking my brains and I don't think I've had a more comfortable wild camping setup than I've got with me today. Well impressed with the amount of room I've got. So this trekker chair combined with a tent with decent headroom, plenty of space around you. It's game changing. I'm literally sprawled out like I would be at home. And the funny thing is this tent, it's been the same design now for, it's coming up 40 years, I think. Okay, so they may have um, upgraded the materials to more modern lightweight stuff. Maybe tweaked it a little bit, but fundamentally it's a tried and tested design. So why reinvent the wheel? I'm gonna be cooking my stew in a minute on the Trangia. 27 cook kit and again this basic design comes from the late 1950s. It's still pretty lightweight, but There's only so much you can change when it comes to camping gear. You can make things a little bit lighter um, You can make things a little bit stronger change the materials here and there, but at the end of the day you've got some sort of canvas or nylon over the top of you um, between you and that cold weather out there. All right, it is time to get some grub inside me. Beef stew and dumplings, so this is a £2.50 Aldi job. Just gonna warm it up in the, in the pan. 
chucking in some, well they were tinned new potatoes with them as well, but they won't have to carry a tin home. It might only be a ping meal, but in conditions like this, this will taste like Michelin star stuff, I promise you. We'll chuck a bit more fuel in now. I don't want to have to refuel halfway through it. I'm hoping that this hasn't frozen. Oh, easy peel, look. That is the biggest con in the world. Never works. No one ever asks for a refund though, do they? This is freezing up and all. Oh God. It's gonna be fun. Can't wait to suck in like. Hang some potatoes in and all. Come on. Get the simmer ring on. Start heating it up. Put the lid on. Get back in five. It goes without saying, I don't recommend that you actually cook inside your tent, but conditions like these, you know, it's something that, that we as wild campers tend to do and we try and manage it the best that we can. You don't want your flame touching your fly sheet or you're in big trouble, but you really do need to have some kind of ventilation. You've got to have fresh air coming in. It was a tragic case um, last week or the week before where a fisherman had a stove on in his bivvy uh, and he died from carbon monoxide poisoning. Um, I don't know if he was using it as a heating thing or whether he was just cooking. Normally if you're just boiling water, you know, you're done in a few minutes and you're not gonna, you're not gonna suffer from any sort of carbon monoxide. But if you've got, you know, stoves on for long periods of time, you're gonna get a build up. Absolutely no way do you do anything like a barbecue or a wood stove um, inside a tent. The only time you can is if you're using a proper hot, a hot tent stove where all of the emissions are, um, evacuated through the chimney. However, even then I still take a carbon monoxide um, tester with me. So, detector, should I say. So you, you can't be too careful when it comes to, to that kind of thing when you're cooking inside your tent. Ooh, starting to get a little bit of action, look. <laughs> hearty food I've added a tiny little bit of water to it that'll just help with it so it doesn't stick and whatever's you know left over to be like beef soup in the bottom I'm going to bring this inside get it off the floor this there's a ping sensation. <laughs> I'm gonna give that another couple of minutes just so it is scalding hot. So I was gonna put it in me seat a summit bowl, but I'm just gonna hold on to this and eat it out of the pot. Saves a little bit on washing up. Got a firm handle for it. Spoon. Just gonna snuff that stove out. So normally put it out with a simmer ring, so I'm gonna put it out with a lid. But make sure you put it out with the lid that you take the little rubber seal out because if you put it on a hot stove you'll damage it. The moment of truth. Is it Gordon Ramsay or Gordon Bennett? Mmm. Oh that's so good. For a ping and I'm saying that that's so good. It's absolutely Baltic, and you need some decent hot food. This is just the ticket. You could obviously make some stew at home and then just warm that up. But if you want something quick, a couple of quid. Meat, dumplings and veg.
So that was awesome. It has burnt the bottom of the pan a little bit though. It's all coming off quite easy, but I'll wait till I get home to clean that off. I'll use a little plastic scraper so I don't damage the pot. Tried scraping it off with a bottle lid. It's coming off easy enough. Got nowhere else to do, so I may as well clean it up. Finishing the last bit off with a bit of hot water. There we go. I'll use this one for my porridge tomorrow now. I do like these pots. I'm thinking I should really use the Trangia more often. It's a little bit bulky, but you can cook pretty much out on it. Keep hearing the tent crackling. It's just under minus five, according to the thermometer. Yeah, minus 4.6. The sky tonight is out of this world. Well, it is, isn't it, really? It's out of this world. It's an other world's perfectly clear sky, all directions. I'm going to try and get a couple of photos. They're only going to be handheld, though, with the iPhone, but um, if any good, I'll stick them on the screen. In fact, I'll stick them up, even if they're rubbish. I'm going to melt a bit of snow. Running low on drinking water, too many coffees. Surprising how much snow you need. You fill one of these up and then it goes to nothing. I'm just skimming the snow off the top because I don't want any bits or anything in it. I've got plenty of fuel and bioethanols. Cheap as chips. It's much better to do this with like a, a petrol stove or something like that. But I wouldn't use a petrol stove in my tent. In fact, the only reason I'm doing this out outside now is because I'm having to get lots of extra snow. I don't want to keep going in and out of the tent. So sometimes when the Alcohol in the burner is really cold. It doesn't want to light. Um, quick tip you can actually do is if you've got one of, get yourself one of these, a little tiny um, spill proof burner. They're only a couple of pounds. Put a tiny bit of fuel in. You don't need much. So light that. Because that lights first time pretty much every time. Put that underneath your trangia and that'll start to warm your alcohol up. It's like one of those, um, um, you can get like a preheater for trangias, but they're very hard to get hold of. You can see a little bit of movement there, only after a couple of seconds. So normally, normally in this con these conditions, that might take a, a minute to bloom and it's, it's blooming already, look. Clearing up a little bit. Then all you do is just move your trangia out of the way. Let that little bit burn out. Snow coffee. No bits in it either. It's been that cold, the GoPros died on me a couple of times. Although these batteries are loads better than the standard ones and you leave them out in cold temperatures they don't perform as well that goes for most batteries really so i'm gonna put these in a bag and then i'm gonna pop them at the bottom of my quilt and hopefully they'll be warm for in the morning see if we can get a bit of radio for at last half an hour or so it's so handy and he took a photo of me outside. I put it on the screen. Frost was selling on my head. Not cold in here though, it is. It's quite a good tent for holding the heat in. Uh, I've got a fleece on. But no need for coats or hats at the minute. I'm not even in a sleeping bag, I'm just you know, sat on the thermo rest.
I'm going to have 10 minutes of listening to the radio, then it's lights out, see what the night and the morning brings. Hey, up. It's just going to hit a clock. Got a frog in my throat. <laughs> frog in my throat. Slid down inside the tent a little bit. It's really warm in here. Well, inside this quill it is. I don't want to get out. The water's still frozen, and that's just been there inside the tent. There's no condensation. Um, this little vent here, I think it just means that everything hits the fly. <laughs> it's frozen on the fly. Anyway, I'm gonna get some warm on, and we'll take a look outside. Looks nice out there, though. Half all this. We've got ice on the inside as well. Baltic. Yeah, stay out. Wow. Not a bad morning at all, look. Oh, oh, oh. the tent. Decent crust on there, look. Sun's looking stunning. The walking poles might need a bit of a dust off and all. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Oh, yeah. Look at the rocks where the wind's been blowing the snow. Let's check Andy's still alive. <laughs> Morning, mate. Survived. Yeah, I was, I was warm as toast. I've had a good kip, actually. Yeah, sorry, really I'm good. Is he, he's dead. <laughs> What's the temperature? It's Hello. Up, actually. When I got up, it was minus three, but since the sun's come up. Yep. Uh, minus one there, uh, minus, minus two. Skywatch up, and we've got like a 12, 10, 12 mile an hour wind. Yeah. Breeze, and in, in 12 mile an hour, it's going to minus 12. Okay, bloody hell. Chill, so I would hold it up like that with seconds, my fingers off and freezing. So. Yeah, I've had to put the mitts on. Well worth putting up with a cold. I needed some cheapo decathlon uh, skiing trousers. Keep you warm, keep you dry. They're a bit bulkier than the down pants, but um, they do a job for, for when you're on a budget anyway. You gotta be quick in and out when you take the gloves off. Doesn't take long for your fingers to get cold. <coughs> one for the coffee. One and a half for my porridge. That will go. Yeah, that'll do. This is called the Anvil. There's loads of these fascinating rocks up here. It's 
still all flaky. It's not a chance to thaw out and refreeze. I bet it hasn't got above freezing for oh, for a week or so anyway. Oh, it's getting there, look. Need something warm to stick to me inside. So most of you might already know that this is my favourite mug or cup. But this, these sort of temperatures doesn't keep your coffee hot enough for long enough. So by the time I finish my porridge, this is, well not cold, but it's just lukewarm now. It's done a job though. But I think next time I come in the cold, I'm going to bring the, I think it's a GSI backpacker. Anyway, that one's insulated, so it'll keep my coffee warmer for longer. So the breeze is picking up a little bit now. Nothing major, but it adds that little bit of chill. Okay, so wind chill, minus 6.8, so that wind definitely makes a difference. Most of the stuff's in the bag. Just got the tent to drop now. You can see just how much room there is in there. Really comfortable last night. Very happy with the setup. Tent was brilliant. Chair was really comfortable. So let's get this packed away. And then we'll reflect a little bit on, on last night's camp. I'm liking the front entry door. You can sit in the tent really comfortably. Do all your cooking. Admire the views. Did a really good job. So that's the inside of the tent block. Bloody hell. More ice on that than on the outer. It's been much easier. I didn't have to wear the gloves, but it's so cold. feel like I've got fat fingers. So that's everything packed away. Not a bad little spot. I'm really glad I bought the bigger pack. Got plenty of stuff in there, mind. Oh, I like how you can um, contract or expand the pack with these little straps here so you can go from 60 all the way up to 75 liters gives you a lot more options 
if you want to bring more gear, especially in the colder months. Helicopter's out. Oh, it's here. Oh, it's there. In the clouds. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but you can see how fast that low cloud's blowing over. Or maybe you can't if the camera's not picking it up. So you really need to know where you're going on places like this. So easy to get lost. Look at all these tracks. So these ones are from hares, sheep, things like that. There's loads of them. It's so easy to lose the main path. Everywhere, it just looks the same. You can end up going around in circles for hours and hours. Keep checking on the map and the sat nav. Pick a bear in, walk for 100 yards or so, and then check it again. Just make sure that you're going in the right direction. There's quite a lot of these markers up on Bleaklo, Kinder as well in places. You tend to just follow the, the markers. It'll, it'll take you to the path anyway, won't it, mate? Yeah. So these markers go all the way along to Bleaklo Head and over to the Wayne Stones. I don't think we're going to be getting any water from that today, are we? Don't want to be falling through out like that either. Need to watch every step. We're just starting to drop down a little bit now. Not quite so much of a white out now, look. Some of this lot's thawed out a little bit. Although all the water's frozen solid down there in the gully. It's not my idea of fun that standing on the edge of icy cliffs. Recipe for disaster. The views are alright though, aren't they? That's close enough for me. Last bit of a hill to go down. I'm going to leave you some info in the description below. Um, things like where I've parked the car, where we pitched the tent. And don't forget, um, if you want to have a go at winning the MSR tent and cook set, that'll be there as well. If you want to check out Andy's video as well, he's got a bit of drone footage, some time lapses, and a lot more info about where we've been camping. But that's it for this one. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. It really helps the channel out. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.